The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house? Search him carefully until she finds it. And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way I tell you. There will be more rejo there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then he said, a man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country, where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had fully spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens, who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pots on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought. How many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened cow and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate for the feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field. And on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened cow, because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, 
Look, all this is. I swear to you, and not once did you did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feed on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with bad people, for him you slaughtered a fattened cow. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now you must celebrate and rejoice. Because your brother who was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Father even saw him and ran 
went missing. Chase him, embrace him. What would you and I do? A son, a daughter, a family member, a neighbor, a, a friend who has hurt us so much. Because of that person that you and I perhaps are suffering or we lost so many things. The person comes to you. Or the person is coming back to apologize. You and I be able to easily forgive and forget. To embrace that person. Not to take it lightly. Let's say it was someone that was not to see. And today we come to the United States of America, this day. How many families have that lost their loved ones who embrace him and what happened? And not just right? Think about that. It's not easy to be that. But that is what we are going to do as Christians. But sometimes the many which Lord gets lost, this the other son got lost. And the older son was so upset that the father received him back. But I will be in the shoes of the older son as well. Because I have done everything right. Why can't I celebrate with my friends too? Not to be the young boy to celebrate, but this day, this common one, this wayward one, comes back home. They just want the best of everything. What about me? Why not me? We ask that question sometimes when things are going on well in our lives and our families. But that is the merciful Father. That's what God does for each and every one of us. And that is what we are called to do for one another in our families, especially those wayward ones. Those who get who give us hard time, our children and grandchildren who don't listen to anything. Those who are into drugs and alcohol and other behaviors that are not worthy. You call a son or a daughter or a grandchild or a family member or a friend or neighbor. But today we are all called upon that like invisible father to help, to bring all these people in. Remember, the son was so much afraid to come home. But the father made the first step to meet him, to bring him home. They have there's somebody that you and I need to meet in that regard and bring the person in. Would you and I be the first person to take that step to bring all these new world family members, relatives, and neighbors in? Somebody to forgive and forget? Somebody to just welcome and say, you know what? I'm forgiving you. So today, I let our table be first as we reflect on the lost and found, which always brings joy when you do something valuable. Your wedding ring just bought like maybe ten thousand dollars or something, and you find it joy, right? Think about lost and found and the joy it brings to each and every one of us. One day we hope that all our lost ones, our loved ones, who whose life were perished during 9 11, and all our family members who have passed on before us, one day when we all meet again, great joy, lost and found, great joy. So today, gathered together as a nation, as family, and as parish, as a parish family, we pray that may the souls of all 9 11 victims, especially our parishioners, may the souls of all the faithful divided through the mercy of God rest in peace. Please stand. And let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all friends were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified by the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
this 21st anniversary of 9-11, as we remember our victims of 9-11 and pray for them, we bring our needs to the needs of the world to God in faith. Our response is we hear our prayer. We pray for the church that God will guide and strengthen her efforts to spread the gospel of repentance and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, we, are prayer. we pray for the United States of America that our nation and our world may be free from the threat of terrorism and that the memory of past acts of violence, especially 9-11, may renew our resolve to defend freedom and peace. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for 9-11 victims and families that God will console all bereaved families of 9-11 victims and grant all 9-11 victims peaceful rest in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for civic and national leaders that they will seek to promote national and world peace, especially peace in Ukraine, Syria, and Ethiopia. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for marriage and family, that all who are preparing for marriage may take the time and effort needed to know each other well and to respond generously to God's call to raise a family. Lord, in your mercy, for all prodigal children and family members, that through the grace of God's mercy, we will be merciful to them like the Father, and help them to repent and be reconciled to the family like the prodigal son. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all in law enforcement, that they will temper justice with mercy in their prosecution of those who go wayward in our society. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this Patriot and Grandparents Day, that God will fortify us to be patriotic citizens and that all grandparents may find joy in their grandchildren and pass along to them the faith and wisdom of the Word of God. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, that we will strive to provide resources and help to our loved ones, friends, and others struggling with suicidal thoughts. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the sick of our parish family, that Jesus, our divine physician, will restore them to the fullness of life and health and liberate them from all afflictions. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our departed loved ones, parishioners, and family members. Especially today, we pray for Gwendolyn K. Safugo, Reverend William Gallagher, Anthony Michael Cannon, and Anthony Joseph Mercabriano, that they may be warmly welcomed into our true home in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for vocations and the 9-11 victims and families for whom this Mass is being offered, and that God will hear the prayers we now speak in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God of everlasting mercy, we are all your prodigal sons and daughters, aware of our guilt, but grateful for your mercy and love. This 21st anniversary of 9 11, hear our prayers for all 9 11 victims and their families. Protect and bless our country through intercession of our Blessed Mother. The faithfulness of our nation, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And that's our gifts are brought to the table of the Lord. Our will give preparation to be found in number 520 in the music issue, the prayer of St. Francis, number 528. 